New England Fishing is brought to you by those who live like a pro. With GMC Sierra Denali, we are professional grade. And brought to you by Garmin, we'll take you there. Pursuit Boats, explore life in a pursuit. Your New England Yamaha outboard dealer. Reliability starts here. And by Bosun's Marine, we share your passion. I know a special place, a certain corner of the country where the fishing is pretty good. A place with deep lakes and surf-pounded beaches, marsh-lined estuaries and lazy forest streams, roaring ocean rips and small secluded ponds. A place called New England. I'm Tom Richardson. Join me as we explore the region's diverse fishing destinations, chase its many species, and forge new fishing adventures on New England Fishing. By the time April arrives in New England, most anglers are champing at the bit to catch something, anything, as long as it swims. Unfortunately, the weather often has other ideas. And it can seem an eternity before the days are warm and calm enough for getting on the water. One of the first early season options is trout fishing in the local ponds and lakes. Since trout prefer cold water, this works out pretty well. Even better, the fish usually feed near the surface and relatively close to shore at this time, making them accessible to wade fishermen. All of the New England states raise and stock trout specifically for sport fishermen to catch. The practice dates back to the mid-1800s, when environmental degradation began taking its toll on wild fish populations. Today, many anglers have state-run hatcheries to thank for providing a source of fun and often food as well as an opportunity for the public at large to enjoy the outdoors. To learn more about how trout are raised and stocked in Massachusetts, I paid a visit to the Sandwich Fish Hatchery on Cape Cod in late April. As the state was wrapping up its spring fish stocking efforts. The sandwich facility, which began as a private venture in 1860, produces nearly 75,000 brook, brown, rainbow, and tiger trout annually, and stocks the fish in 35 rivers and streams, and 50 lakes and ponds in 27 cities and towns in southeastern Massachusetts. The Sandwich State Fish Hatchery was purchased in 1912. It was a private fish company before then, and we purchased it in 1912, and we've been operating it ever since. So it just celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2012. And the building we're in right now is actually built by the WPA, I believe, in 1941. Uh, some of the original, the office building was here in 1912, and there was a hatch house that was here um, until the early 1990s. It was part of the original installation that was purchased from the Sandwich Trout Company. Okay, so at the uh, Sandwich Fish Hatchery, there's actually four full-time staff, uh, but at this time of the year, we're actually using district staff to put out a lot of the fish. Uh, we have two large tank trucks at the district and one small tank truck that we use to get in uh, to smaller ponds that we can't get in with the big truck. Okay, we have an um, interactive map right now that when we stock the fish today, it will show up on the web tomorrow. Um, it's an interactive map. You can find out what species has been stocked and the date they were stocked. Uh, you can actually zoom into your town uh, and zoom in in a body of water. With this many fish, it's just not the, the anglers and fishermen that are after them, it's any other uh, fish-eating bird. So there's usually a variety of great blue herons, osprey, 
uh, kingfishers and a variety of other fish-eating birds that get attracted to this place. They have to spend a lot of time keeping the birds from getting all the fish so the anglers can have some. Uh, so they spend a lot of time putting nets over the raceways to try to keep the birds out. But you still get a lot of birds that come in and try to get their uh, fill of fish. Mammals, occasionally you have river riders try to get in here. And actually a few years ago, they actually had a harbor seal that came up from Cape Cod Bay and found its way into the hatchery uh, and proceeded to eat some of the broodstock browns. Yeah, this facility is open 365 days a year, nine to three every day. Uh, it's totally free. People can come in here and walk around and see the grounds. And for a quarter, they can buy a handful of fish food and feed the fish, which is a very popular thing for the kids. Hi, I'm Tim Leadham, owner of Bosun's Marine. At Bosun's Marine, we share your passion is more than just a tagline. For over 33 years, Bosun's Marine has been bringing you the finest power boats in the industry. We are committed to bringing you unparalleled service year round, year after year. From offshore fishing and cruising yachts to small family oriented day boats, come visit us at one of our showrooms here in Mashpee on Cape Cod or at our new showroom in Peabody, just north of Boston. And be sure to check us out online at bosuns.com. Explore, experience, and enjoy your life in Pursuit, Pursuit Boats. For more than 60 years, we have built premium boats with unmatched quality, durability, and performance. Whether you want action, adventure, or relaxation, we have the boat for you. We offer a wide range of models from 23 to 38 feet. Offshore, center console, dual console, sport coupe, and the sport tender. No matter what your boating style is, Pursuit has what you need. Contact your local dealer today and explore, experience, and enjoy your life in Pursuit. For details, visit PursuitBoats.com. The first stop on my hatchery tour was the hatch house, the building where the trout are raised from eggs to fry. The process starts in the fall when the eggs and milt are taken from the broodstock fish and mixed. Fertilized eggs are then taken to the hatch house where they are placed in large troughs and monitored until they hatch, which takes about a month. The tiny trout, called sack fry, are filtered into different troughs until they begin searching for food on their own, at which point they are fed by the hatchery staff. So the, the fry that we're looking at here, how old are they? These are about five months old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, they, what happens is once they hatch, start hatching in those baskets. And you shake them down so the fry fall through. Land in, land in the trough as, swim, as uh, sack fry. Okay. So we don't have to feed them at all. They just absorb that yeah. yolk sac. Like halibans, they call them? Or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they absorb that yolk sac. And then they they start getting hungry. <laughs> they get really so hungry. So they start rising in the water column, mm -hmm. and they're called swim-ups. Okay. And that's yeah. how we know it's time to start feeding them. Yeah. So they're, they're looking just, for, they're, they're actively, they're actually looking, actively looking, for. looking for food now. Mm -hmm. And then basically once they're too big for the troughs, they come into the circulars. Uh-huh. And when they're probably double the size they are now, they'll be too big for the air. Mm -hmm. So we'll bring them outside. So then they start going, so then you transfer them to the outdoor here, pen. To the outdoor pen. Okay. And then basically it's just always, as they outgrow the pen they're in, we split them up and move them. Gotcha. Give them room to grow. Got, I got involved in this, this field uh, because I grew up fishing and hunting. And I actually, as a kid, got the opportunity to go do some electro fishing with some of the mass wildlife biologists and I was just hooked. <laughs> and I, knew, I just knew from then on that working for fishing game was something I wanted to do. And um, so I went to UMass Amherst and got a degree in fisheries biology. And all four of us here on station have a degree in fisheries biology or aquaculture. Uh, every spring the, the fish that we stock are typically a foot long. Uh, the brook trout, we try to get to, to 12 inches, which is about a pound a piece. Brown trout and rainbow trout are 14 plus, which is just over a pound. And the tigers as well are, are 
about a pound a piece. And the brood stock are anywhere from three to nine pounds. When it's time to start the spring stocking operations, it's all hands on deck. With everyone in position, a worker herds the fish into one end of the pen so that the trout can be easily scooped up with a net. The net is weighed to record the number of trout, then the fish are transferred to huge recirculating water tanks on the stocking truck. When the trucks have been loaded with trout, it's time to hit the road. Hauling your boat on a steep ramp can put a lot of wear and tear on your transmission, especially if you need to accelerate quickly to prevent the rig from rolling backwards. Not a problem with the GMC Sierra Denali, which features automatic hill start assist. When the Sierra Denali's monitoring system detects that the truck is parked on a grade of 5% or greater, hill start assist automatically engages the brakes for a maximum of two seconds while you make the transition between releasing the brake pedal and pressing the accelerator, keeping the truck from rolling backwards. This allows you to accelerate smoothly as you haul the boat without having to use the emergency brake. Hill Start Assist, just another thoughtful feature of the GMC Sierra Denali designed to make trailering easier so you can have more fun on the water. When you're moving a big offshore boat, it's all about thrust and trust. For thrust, nothing compares to the Yamaha purpose-built 5.3-liter V8 Power Pioneer. And for trust, Yamaha's new F350C model becomes the only outboard in its horsepower class to feature a five-year limited warranty. Never settle for less than complete confidence and control in the open water. That's Yamaha V8 Power. Get the best and forget the rest. This isn't your normal nine to five. Every day, there's a new puzzle to solve and no two days look the same. We get hands-on experience and continue a boating tradition passed down from generation to generation. This tradition has survived recessions and has been able to adapt and grow with new technology. This isn't your normal job, and that's why we love it. The boating industry is full of opportunities. Find out more about our careers by visiting massboatingcareers.com. Our tour of the fish hatchery concluded, I followed one of the stocking trucks to nearby Mashpee Pond, where the fish were offloaded, rather unceremoniously, into the frigid water. After venting their bodies of excess nitrogen by rolling on the surface, the trout dispersed and vanished into the depths. Their blissful hatchery lives were over, and they would now have to fend for themselves. My tour of the sandwich fish hatchery left me eager to catch some of these trout on my own. 
So I teamed up with Chris Nashville of the Goose Hummock Shops for a shore fishing foray in Nickerson State Park, home to four ponds that are stocked by the state. We started off at Big Cliff Pond, which features a small launch area for canoes, kayaks, and small motorized craft, and is ringed by a walking path that provides easy access to anglers on foot. What's the drill? Where do you where do you like to start here? So we're gonna start right in the cove here, right by the ramp, and you know we'll work our way down, almost down all the way to that big rock, and you know we'll just uh, keep plugging away. And so it's pretty shallow along the along the edges here. Yeah, it's shallow along the edge, so you can wade, but it drops off pretty quick, especially right in this little corner here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but even down towards that, same thing. It's a pretty quick drop off, so we'll be able to fish a few di different depths, find out where they're hanging out. And so is that what you do? I mean, are you are you are you fishing edges? I mean, do the fish like hang into like little bowls or on the drop off yeah. edges? How, is that? Yeah, pretty... they'll they'll hang out and you know on the drop offs. You know, they'll come into the shallows earlier morning, um, and then they'll kind of spread out from there. The water's you know starting to warm up, so they don't mind coming into the shallows now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. And so when did they stock this pond? Uh, I believe the last time they stocked it was the 27th, but they've done it six or seven times. So yeah. there's plenty of fish in here for us. <laughs> okay. All right, good. Well, let's go get a few. All right. Sounds good. There's one. Hi, I'm Tim Leadham, owner of Bosun's Marine. At Bosun's Marine, we share your passion is more than just a tagline. For over 33 years, Bosun's Marine has been bringing you the finest power boats in the industry. We are committed to bringing you unparalleled service year round, year after year. From offshore fishing and cruising yachts to small family oriented day boats, come visit us at one of our showrooms here in Mashpee on Cape Cod or at our new showroom in Peabody, just north of Boston. And be sure to check us out online at bosuns.com. Pursuit, built to a higher standard. Many try to replicate. Pursuit continues to innovate with cutting edge features and top notch technology. Offshore, center console, dual console, sport coupe, and the sport tender. We have boats from 23 to 38 feet, and once you own one, you will feel the difference. We know you have a choice, and you can put your trust in us to deliver a vessel that will take you where you want to go. Visit your factory authorized dealer today and experience the passion we have built into each and every one of our boats. Visit PursuitBoats.com and explore, experience, enjoy your life in pursuit. After a few hours of fishing Big Cliff Pond in Cape Cod's Nickerson State Park, we drove to nearby Flax Pond, also in the park, and bushwhacked our way through the tangled undergrowth and downed pitch pines to the shore. This pond had also been recently stocked with rainbow and brook trout, and we had heard rumors of large browns being caught as well.
As on most of Cape Cod, the ponds inside Nickerson Park were formed some 12,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age. As the ice sheet retreated, it calved massive chunks of ice that were eventually covered by sand and rocks carried in the glacial outwash. The melting ice left depressions in the sandy soil that filled with runoff and water supplied by subterranean springs. The so-called kettle ponds were born. So, uh, Chris, tell us uh, about the gear you like to use for these, uh, these trout. So the rods, we'll start with those. The St. Croix Trout Series is a great one. They make them in all different sizes. Uh, the ones that we have here, five foot six and the six foot four. Um, both of these, pretty universal. Spoons, little jigs, uh, even little uh, jerk baits you can throw with them. Okay. Um, but the, you know, they're a lot of fun with the ultralight, you know, catching these fish. They're not too big. Well, not all of them, but. <laughs> yeah, right. So how about the reels? So the reels, these are both Shimano's. This is the Noski 1000 um, and this is the Simmons. 1000 but that 1000 size you know again just makes it a, a funner fight and you know a lot more you know game okay game more intent, gotcha more and and what about so what do you have these spooled up with so these are spooled up with eight pound power pro and then uh, we use a uh, six pound cigar fluorocarbon leader mm -hmm. um, got a swivel on there for the uh, the spoons that we we're throwing they twist the line up a little bit so sure thing Helps helps a little bit anyway. Excellent. Well, so nice light setup. This is perfect, uh, perfect for these fish. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun catching them with these. Excellent. Nice. I was jigging that more than just slow you? reeling it. Yeah. Yeah. The rainbow. All right, there we go. Nice. Hey, I remember that guy from the hatchery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I distinctly remember him. So, how were you fishing that? So instead of slow reeling it, I was just jigging it a little bit, um, trying to get it down in the water column a little more, and he mm -hmm. took it, so. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna keep up with that. Okay, technique. great, well, I'm, I was just about to sw swap out lures, but I think I'll stick with that spoon after all. Come on, bud. Yeah. I'll let you go. Well, we found one, we'll, we'll see if we can get some I, more here. That's absolutely <laughs> right, Will. When there's one, there's there's usually more. Yeah, especially. And these guys, you, you'll say that these guys will school up. Yeah, you'll usually there'll be more than one. Um, you know, especially you'll, if you can see them in the shallows, there'll definitely be more than one typically. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Get this guy well, on nicely right. done. Hey, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> hey, the other way, pal. He's a little. But these are hatchery fish. You know, they're not that. They're not as smart as no. the wild ones. <laughs> So Chris, walk me through a couple of uh, standard lures, some of your go-to lures that you like to use for the uh, spring trout fishery. Sure, sure. So spoons are a big one. Um, you got the Colorados here. The gold uh, is definitely one of the one of the most popular colors, uh, especially at the shop that we sell. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Then you've got the Thomas Buoyants, which you know, a little bit different action on them, a little bit different of a wobble. Um, you know, same principle, but they make these in a bunch of different kind of colors, patterns, things like that. So you can kind of go crazy easy with it. Mm -hmm. um, then you have inline spinners like this guy here. Uh, that's a rooster tail. Those are very popular. Um, and then I have a Joe's Fly here, which has uh, been one of my favorites over the past few years. Um, but they make these with a few different flies off the back. So that's uh, like a, if you were like a, like a, a fly pattern, like in fly fishing, yep. that's what they, uh, they resemble, but they have the uh, the spinner blade in, in front of it. And they come in, like you said, it come in, comes in different, different patterns. Yeah, and that gold that gold spoon on there, you know, that, that'll attract them, and then they see that little fly off the back. And, you know, when they're finicky, that's a really good bait to be throwing. Okay, cool. So that's a nice selection. Big Cliff, Little Cliff, Higgins, and Flax Ponds are stocked with trout because they are surprisingly deep and fed by springs with a constant temperature of 50 degrees. Water that deep stays cold enough to provide a haven for trout when temperatures soar in the summer.
Like apple blossoms and daffodils, the trout of southeastern Massachusetts provide a brilliant splash of color to the otherwise drab landscape. For fishing star anglers, they're another sign that spring has at last arrived in New England, and a most welcome start to a new season. Well, that's a wrap on another great episode of New England Fishing. To learn more about fishing in this great part of the world, be sure to visit NewEnglandFishingTV.com. It's your gateway to loads of informative fishing articles, videos, fishing-related news and resources, gear and boat reviews, and much more. And don't forget to order your copy of New England Fishing Magazine, a big, bold, glossy publication packed with articles that will help you catch more and bigger fish all year long. Until next time, I'm Tom Richardson for New England Fishing. Thanks for watching.